Last characteristic of a service is perishability, or the inventory problem. Unlike physical products, if you don't sell a service, you can't put it in inventory and save it for later. Um, so if an airplane takes off with an empty seat, you can't take that empty seat and put it on the next flight. Um, that seat is empty. If you're running a television show and you have an ad spot that's not sold, you can't move that ad spot to another show later. That's an opportunity gone forever. So the issue is you can't bank un unused capacity. Um, and this really is important in areas where there's a high fixed cost component to providing the service. Um, so a couple of the approaches, uh, scheduling. Um, this is a little bit of uh, gospel of, uh, according to Bruce in here. Um, it works well when the service performance time is consistent. Um, so uh, for example, if I schedule a doctor's appointment, you ever had a doctor's appointment and then you get there and the doctor's running late? Because it's hard to say just how much time each patient is going to take. So if, there's, it's, if the, the service is, is fairly consistent and time scheduling works, um, or um, when customers require it, even though it may not be the most efficient way. Um, yeah, so many restaurants don't like to take reservations because reservations uh, don't allow for the maximum utilization of tables during peak hours um, because you have to have a table empty while you're waiting for a reservation to be filled. It's much more efficient just to have people waiting in line and seat them as tables become open, but some customers won't do that. Some customers won't wait in line. So in order to uh, get those customers, even though it's not the most efficient way to deal with it, you take reservations. Um, when service time varies, um, you have to under schedule capacity in order to take reservations. Um, and if the customer doesn't have a choice, uh, why would you take reservations? Um, Um, another way of dealing with the perishability issue is, again, price rationing. Um, in the restaurant business, for example, you have peak times and off-peak times. Many times they will offer price incentives to have an early bird special or a light, late diner special so that to encourage people to go off the peak times. Yes? Okay, so for example, in Vegas, which I wouldn't know about what goes on there, but I've heard, uh, is hotels are cheaper on weekdays than on weekends because everybody wants to be there on the weekend. And so they will give you a price incentive to change your plans to, again, this is price rationing, letting the customer choose uh, the service that they want. Another approach is this dynamic pricing. Um, this is the pricing that the airlines use. Airlines have very high fixed cost capacity. Um, and the marginal cost of adding a person to a flight on an airplane is essentially the cost of that little bag of peanuts. <laughs> um, and so if an airplane leaves with an empty seat, the, the opportunity to sell that seat is gone forever. When it's time to shut the door, as long as I can get more money than the cost of that little bag of peanuts, it would make sense for me to put somebody on that plane to maximize the revenue. <coughs> And that's what dynamic pricing does, is it monitors the capacity of each flight over time and will change prices as capacity changes. Um, the idea being that there are some people that absolutely have to get there for some reason and there needs to be a seat available for that person. Uh, there are people who are very um, price conscious and uh, we offer restricted tickets. You have to book three weeks in advance, um, and you can get a relatively low non-refundable fare, and that way you can fill the bulk of the seats. And then as we get closer to the flight, if the seats aren't selling as well, maybe we reduce the price to fill the plane, or if seats are selling a little faster than we thought, maybe we raise the price to increase the likelihood that if somebody needs a high-priced ticket at the last minute, um, they can still get on the plane. And then as last resort, they might have a standby where 
If there's, you know, that high price ticket, nobody bought it, and the plane's about to take off, if there's somebody standing there that's willing to get on the plane, I will give you a very good rate if you're willing just to wait around for an empty seat. Um, yeah. I, I, this was a, a while ago, but I had a friend who worked at United Airlines, and he had said at that time, um, they were publishing somewhere around a thousand price changes a day um, for the airline. This is very dynamic. It's many times in real time. Questions on characteristics of services? Understanding is total. Commitment is perfect. Uh, duh. <laughs> 